stream is in excellent condition, yes. Okay, as you can see, I now have two of these. Well, four of these, but two free. So, printed a new one. Um, I also went through my list of corrections and checked my spreadsheet, and I did have to swap out the, the button heads. The nuts, so these M4, M4, M4 by seven millimeter by seven millimeter nuts. That's just a standard thin square nut that you can buy at McMaster. Um, I think they're still cheaper that way. They don't make an M4 by 10 that I could find. Um, lots of people selling the drop-in nuts in an M4. Um, sorry. E thought. Oh, drop-ins. So they do make drop-ins in M4s that cam and fit this perfectly. They also have slide-ins. But the drop-ins are actually cheaper than the slide-ins for whatever reason. So, well, mileage may vary. Um, if I had to do it again, I would check if the drop-ins cleared and probably use them because it'd make assembly easier. I'll just go with the slide-ins. Here. Yeah. Um, I also noticed I only got 10 bearings. Now, I can't remember if I ordered 10. Or if I ordered 12 and they shorted me two, so I gotta go check that. Because I definitely need 12 bearings. First things first. I already hit these with a torch to get the stringies off. Push the bearings in. Like so. Get my other long rod. Very, very long. Yeah, that's the long one. Long run. Little drop arms. Let's see which end has the better bevel. The end does. So when I push them in like that, they go flush to this ridge, so I gotta tap them back. You probably can't see this, but I just stick them in my vise. Can you see this? No, you can't see this. Stick them in my vise then. Tap the backside down until it's flush with the back versus the ribs. These go on in no particular orientation, thankfully. And then I need another one of these, and I need to line it up so the drop that faces in and the drop belongs that way. And everything's going to slide. Tap that one back out. And this one needs to be clocked slightly. And then he needs to go on more. Oop, too much. Okay, and I used, I don't think I used 14s for those, did I? Good question. I did not use 14s, I must have used 12s out of my collection. M4s. as I probably will need it again and again. Disassembly. Try and knock out the stringies. Um, I printed these in this orientation without support, so there's all sorts of strings inside of the uh, cavities where the screw heads go. nuts.
drop goes down. So I'm gonna go this way. Slide both those nuts in. Slide both those nuts in. So not tightening, 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 and, 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 tightening this all the way up yet. I'm gonna get this side on and then use the spacer trick again to, to do that. So I'm gonna try and learn from last time and put this together first. I think. Let's pop some of these parts. I can go on right away. The goal here is just to get them nice and flush to the end. It's relatively flush and square. I won't go crazy. I'll tighten it up a little bit. foot oh, there's something in that foot not letting it go all the way down but whatever okay that's a good corner that's a good corner that's the slightly mutant corner so put that in the back corner so it started to peel off the bed when it was 3d printing so this corner is sort of work perfectly fine for what I want it for as is so I'm just gonna keep going with it and another bag of nuts 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 Throw my empty bags back there. And just keep nutting. So this guy will go in like so. I can just slide this whole thing in like that. Okay, of these two, they look about the same. Enough. 
And the last bracket. Well, the last bracket for the lower frame. There's another pile of brackets for the upper frame. But that's for a later day. Uh, yeah, it's a long shot. I'll get to it tonight. Stream still going. How many billions of viewers? None. Yes. Square nut. Okay, that's in. One of these two sides is too tight. Oh, was that one? Nice. going to get, I'm just worrying about getting this flush. And then I'll tighten up. Try to tighten up that guy. Okay. Go over to this side. Play in here to close up that gap. Yep, I do. Okay, got that bracket flush to this surface, flush to that surface. So I'm going to lock down these two screws. Crunch them in a little bit. Then I'm going to flush up top corner and pull the front in, which is a little kitty wampus because of that rod. truth. Let's see if it resembles square. It's a little off, but not bad. A little bit of a gap on this end. But overall, I'm happy. It doesn't take much to make me happy these days. 
aluminum frames that are square. Good donut. Salad. Salad makes me pretty happy, which is really weird. Uh, <laughs> code that compiles. Compiles. There's that. So, again, if I had these to reprint again, I'd do them at like 30% infill. Instead of the 15%. These screws are just sinking right into them. Or put more perimeters on them. You just, it just needs something to beef them up a bit. until the screws just start to sink into the plastic. Next test. No rock. No rock. Hey, it's at least as flat as my table. Which, that's not saying much, but it's much better than other things I've done in the past. Looks decently square. I mean, it's far from perfect, but good enough for me. So now, I need another one of these. And I'm going to stick that in that little gap right there. Slide the sliders down. Make sure those are on the right side. And I'm just going to lock that one right in. Attempt to. Okay, I'm happy with that. Same thing on this side, just using the corner bracket as a spacer. say that the nut came off the back. That'd be annoying. That one didn't though. I can actually see down the tube. lowermost frame is completed. This is complete as that can be. So now I'm going to start just sort of building up from this. Um, I could go for the upper frame right away. Eh, it's a little bit of twaddle. But I'm not. Instead, I'm trying to assemble this mess. Assembles one, two, three, four. I think these can go on afterwards. So I'm gonna wait on them. So I need the small rods. Small. 
the question is going to be, when I tighten these together, I don't think it will be. I think I do need that bottom plate. So there's a plate that can go on the bottom or from the pictures. It looks like a plate that hooks these four together. And I think it keeps them from doing this number. But, you know, if these rod grooves are deep enough, strong enough, pick your term, then maybe I don't need it. Other problem I may have. No, nope, looks like that fits. Cool. Okay, so these are M3s, I do believe. So M3 by 35s, or M3s up to 35s. And I think I ordered some M3s. M3 by 8s. So I'm guessing the M3 by 8s. Plus nuts. Which type of nut do I have the most of? Stainless steel or steel? Steel. So, for my parts and pieces, I typically try to use up what I have a lot. So I have a little bit of everything left over. And then when I need a screw, I don't have to wait weeks to order one. I, I have at least a screw. And then when I get really low, I'll go buy another bag and start over. You have a bunch of boogers. So the theory is that goes through that into a nut. That's actually pretty rigid. I wonder if that will be enough. Yes. Uh, the pockets were not set up for square nuts. I did check that. So there's those. There's another four. So, a regular nut on the diagonal goes in this side. Hopefully, yep. And then two M3s go into this part. 2.5 millimeter Allen wrench is the correct Allen wrench. And I'm going to split the difference on the rods between the two sides, or at least try to. Spin. That's actually in there pretty good. So it's actually torquing the whole bearing holder over. So I'm thinking I don't need the bottom plate, which saves a bunch of material, time, and screws. There's four screws each one of these bearing bushings, blocks. Uh, there is a proper term for a thing that holds bearings. And it is eluding me. There you go. I really need to demagnetize those. Where is... The magical demagnetizer. Oh. Oh, yeah, he's working. No longer magnetic. Works like a treat. Likely older than I am. Oh, 
I wonder where the saying works like a treat comes from. I wonder if it had something to do. Almost sounds like something from a dog commercial. So good, it works like a treat. But who knows. Yeah, I, I don't think I have to worry about that racking. So the uh, is the keen of you have been yelling at me for a few minutes. I didn't put my bearings on. It was just a test. I knew that. Really. Maybe. Probably not. Okay. This side apart. Grab the two bearings. out of my bearings. I hate it when I knock my balls out. I'm not greasing these bearings before I put them on. Um, this is going to have such low usage, strain, whatever, that the shipping grease will probably be good enough for a while. And then once it does sort of run out and get gummy, um, I'm just going to switch over to sewing machine oil. So just lightly oil and run them back and forth. And that's usually good enough for a while. So before I put this guy on, Try and clean the stringies out of the pockets. So this is for holding an M5 nut, and this is an M5 nut plus a spring. So the goal here is you have a fixed nut here being pushed that way, or a fixed nut in this pocket that doesn't really move, and then this nut here, when it's screwed on, you want it off of this surface and compressing the spring slightly. So the theory is these two nuts are pushing away from each other, which takes any backlash out of the system. So that's part of the nine billion springs I bought, or nine million dollars worth of springs I bought. But before I put it together, I'm gonna knock the big stringies out of the holes best I can. Um, this was printed this way. So you can see the top surface of these holes is kind of meh at best. But a little poking and the application of heat, and we should be good enough. Okay, Get some nuts. One nut. Oh, two nuts, top cover thing, nuts for top cover thing, screws, bolts, the things, the screwy screwy bits. I'm just getting those started, and I'm pushing the rod. far that way as I can. The concern is, nope, this end's open, this end's closed. So that little bit of stick out on that end will work just fine. Screw them till they squeak. There you go. And 
not this side. And not this side. Or why? I got sort of a decision to make. Decisions are hard. So this is the plate I was going to use. So there's uh, paper towels. Mm, excuse me. So I got a couple choices for different plate stock. But the bigger I make this, this this layer doesn't matter as much because there's a, a slew ring that goes on here and that's all that supports the top plate. So I can basically make this a square chunk in the center just bigger than that slew plate and I'm good. Uh, but the next layer up, the bigger I make it so you can put bigger cards on it, the less adjustment I get. So I sort of got to figure out how much, well, it's just slightly. I gotta figure out how much adjustment I want. So adjust all the way down to there. I think about that much. So I need to set the length of this rod because that's sort of the next bit to go together. I'm gonna put these away for now. figure out all the bits for that. So for that I need a knob. And a, is that an M3? Yeah that's an M3 by 8. So I'll need some nuts for that. And that's it for plastic bits. I do need out of here. Need two springs. Those are the big springs. And the little springs. The little springs come in five packs, which works out good because I need five of them. And ooh, they're fairly stiff. They're not horribly stiff. I need a bunch of M5 nuts. M5. M12s, wrong directions. M4s. M5s. So. My plan is have M5 washer on either side of this so you have a nice soft plastic surface against a hard surface against a soft surface soft to soft or hard to hard will gall where hard to soft will the soft side will wear and the hard side won't. Then we have a spring. Whoops. Uh, I might need a couple more washers. A spring, two lock nuts, then 
nut spring adjuster nut. So where are my nuts? Five by point eights. Do I have nylocks? That's a good question. So two for there. One. Nylocks. Nylocks. Oh, I do have nylocks. I'm gonna do a nut and a nylock on the knob side, or attempt to. The reason I say attempt to is I gotta thread them along the rod to get them in. So it may not go as planned. We will see. So now is the spring. Nice to have another large washer. not have many of those thicker washers. I don't know. It is what it is. And then I need an M3 nut. Oh, it's 40 M3. For the knob. Last piece. Is a bunch of M3 threaded rod. So the whole playing around I did ahead of time was just to sort of figure out what my maximum range is so I can cut this rod hopefully to the proper length and not the improper length, which will result in much screaming, crying, and carrying on. So I'm thinking I'm going to go that long. I don't see any reason to go longer than that. And that gives, us, gives me that much travel and adjustability. Okay, I got that. Take a nut. Could throw this in the lathe and do it there. Yeah, not set up at the moment. So the reason I'm threading a nut onto this rod all the way down to the cut is so once I cut it, I can run the nut back off the rod, which will clean up the end of the threads. Um, I'm also going to grind a bit of a taper on them, as that will clean them up as well. Uh, okay, now it's time to cut this thing.
that off? Can I get it back on? Yes, I can. Cool. That's ready for the next job. So I'm going to take, put... This is a nice clean end. I'll go buy that. Do I have a wrench sitting here for this? Five sixteenths? Oh, fits. So that's what I was kind of afraid of. Oh, that nylock is <laughs> really hard to move down this rod. So plan B is I'm going to try and start the, the nylock backwards. So I put it on first to cut some threads in the nylon portion. And once I clean up the threads on the far end of this with a nut, I'm going to try and thread that nylock on backwards. So I don't have to thread it as far down this whole rod. I think I'm going to have to... Oh. I have to do it the hard way. So I want to take a pair of nuts, put them on this end, clamp one of them in the vise, And take the other one and lock it against it. That will hold the rod without mushing up, mushing up the threads. And then I'm just threading the nylock all the way down the rod. Oh, this is. So much fun. Now well, I don't have to go all the way down the rod, just 90%. So basically it's that far down. And I'm a quarter of the way down. Wrench popped off. This gets harder. Once I get over the halfway mark, I'm going to pull it out and flip it over. You know, I probably should mark how far I actually need to go. That would be wise. I'm not that wise. Okay. Halfway. Slack off the lock nut. Everything's nice and warm from all the friction going on. So the way this is going to assemble is I'm going to have a nut nut, a wash washer, 
I'm going to drop everything on there, aren't I? A spring, a washer. It's a little loosey goosey on there. I could print a centering bit, but meh. And this needs to slide through there like so. Okay. And then it needs to go down into this knob that much. It basically puts me right where that nut is. God, I hope I didn't cut this too short. That'd be annoying. So, there is that side of the assembly. 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 Speaking of ass. Got to warn you, dream's not for children. I'm old and crotchety. That's my excuse. Well, not yet. But I'm getting there. Okay, so how this goes on, the knob should just push on the end, and then this screw. You tighten the screw through the nut and pinch the rod. Forget the washer. So. That looks pretty good. I don't think that's going to come off. And then I want to tighten this up just enough that it, it takes. I don't want this rattling back and forth in this direction, but I don't want it so tight that this digs into stuff. So if I loosen it off, right there the nut came loose. So now I'm going to give it two turns. And finish tightening this nut up. to compress that spring a bit and lock those two nuts together like so. So now this still turns freely but it pulls everything that way so when you adjust it there's no back and forth slop. And if everything worked out and I got this assembled correct it slides right on slides the whole way. Um, the downside of doing this is I lost that much travel. But in theory you can move be able to move the magnetic mounts magnetic mounts around to get you close. And this is just to get the final adjustment. So three pieces left. That is this assembly. This nut goes in like so. This should just thread right on in until it pops out the other side like so. And this is the fun part. So I need to get this spring in there like so. Press that spring down and drop this nut behind it. And then press. That's an M5. Uh, shoot. One of these will do. Yeah. 
I need to compress that nut slightly and get this threaded into it. So the goal is to go through both nuts. I think I got it. Like so. So this spring is pushing both ways. So it's pushing that nut that way and this nut this way. So in the nut, or the thread has a point like that, the nut sits over top of it, there's tolerance. So that's not a perfect fit. Without this arrangement, this will do this number. So you adjust, you know, if you, you adjust this way and then stop, the carriage could float back and forth. And then you adjust this way and stop, the carriage can float back and forth. This takes the, the, the slack out of the system and it's called a anti-backlash nut typically. So here's all that. So now I'm back to that bottom plate. So putting that bottom plate on would really stiffen this up. But I'm thinking once I put the top plate on, that might do the same thing. So I'm, gonna, I'm continuing to hold off on making that decision. I'm going to set this to the maximum travel, which I'm going to say is right there. You know, we don't want, if this pops to this nut, it's, it's a bad day. So what's the next layer? So the next layer is these pieces, which Pop on like that. Ooh, that one heard that one crack. These should just really snap on. I, so when I printed these, I printed them up like this. So they're really strong in this direction and weak in this direction. This one, due to its arrangement, I printed on its back. So it's strong. Prints back. It's strong this way, but it's weak this way. So when I pop that on there, it's like, woo, I heard the layers split, but it's holding, so we're good. There's that one. And there should be one more. One more. Arranging parts. There it is. parts and putting like things together makes it easier finding stuff in the future okay so the next piece I got this adjustment which I'm thinking I might just duplicate this length and get that assembled and then I'll worry about what goes on top about six and a half inches which gave me five inches so, oh that's more than halfway um, I won't have that much adjustment in this at least not in that axis so what bolts on top of this is this piece so I gotta clear the bolt holes well maybe I could go halfway Okay, halfway it is. So now I need all the same pieces yet again. So let's get my, I got a knob. I think that's it, everything else is on there. So I need, what size did I grab? Oh, these are M4. I need the M3s. Goes 
guy. He has a bit of a, a burr or something on him. Just means it'll never fall out of there. Put the screw in. That's ready to go. I need my springs. Bring them a things. One and two. Put that one back. I need M5s. M4s. M5s. I need three regular nuts. Future, one for now. Well, I'm just thinking about the the next piece I got to put on and how that's going to go together. I don't. I think I just need lock nuts on this side. Oh no, there's going to be more decisions made at that point. So I'll come back for more nuts for that one later. And washers. Washer, 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 washer. One, two, three. Right, yep, three. It looks like I'm out of those slightly fatter ones, so I should check these don't. Yeah, I think that'll work. Make sure they don't fall into the spring. That'd be not ideal. Okay, so we decided, or I decided, at most, at most, right there. So at most, right about there. Make my mark. Amadeus. And a second nut. And just thread away. Hmm, what other interesting things do I have? Hmm. So the next step after this is putting the top plate on. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna have to clean equipment off to cut it. Regular arm saw or table saw works great for cutting thinnish aluminum plate, but it makes conductive confetti. So I don't really like doing it in my shop because it gets freaking everywhere. Um, I could do it with my skill saw and just take it outside, but. That requires going outside in December in Minnesota with a big chunk of aluminum and hang on to it while you cut things off. Not ideal either. I do have a plasma cutter. I don't know how that will do on aluminum. plasma cutter. Um, that's a relatively new acquisition that's really fun to play with. I think it will cut aluminum. 
I'm guessing it leaves kind of a nasty edge. I also have a metal coating bandsaw I could use, but again, sort of a nasty edge. So, I'm sort of leaning to the either the skill saw or the radial arm saw. End. Yep, I can get it started. I'm going to put two nuts on this end and I'll lock them together in a vise. In the D vise. I only got one down here at the moment. And then start the lock nut on the top and sit here and just screw away for a while. So basically I'm doing the same thing I did for this guy. I'm making this assembly up. And it will go right there. Hopefully. Quarter of the way. Getting to the halfway point now. This is actually an 8mm wrench. So apparently I had both of them out on my bench. Oh, there's the 516th. Okay, how close am I? Oh, that might actually be uh, too far down. nut all the way down. Just assemble this real quick. Oh, so too far. Yeah, I gotta lock the nuts together again. to check more frequently. Okay, what? looks much more reasonable. Washer. 
assembly, washer, knob. First on the floor for tonight. Lock the nuts together. In the vise. Screw the lock nut some more. Now locks are great for not vibrating off. They kind of really suck for putting on long threaded rods, especially when you want them somewhere in the middle. I wonder if they make like a split nut. <laughs> where it threads on normally and then there's like a set screw or something in the side to lock it in place. I bet someone somewhere is made or something like that. Okay, that's good. Oh, that was bad. I just split the... I just split the living bejesus out of that screw. Well, we'll see how long it lasts and I'll print another one at some point. Good tension. I gotta run this guy in. Same thing I did over there, only much more difficult because I got something wanting to slide right in the way. Uh, this one might be it for tonight. So I gotta reprint this part. So, oh yeah, that that split too. So I think I'm gonna reprint him standing up instead of laying on his back. It will eliminate that problem. I'm also gonna print it at. 
30% in pill instead of uh, 15, which it currently is at. And that will hopefully eliminate the current issues. So like I said, it's very weak on these layer lines. So doing this, it comes apart really easily. It's really strong when you're against the lines. So, yeah, there. Okay, so reprint him. Uh, I may throw another knob on there since I'm right here. Uh, I actually have another knob. So the knobs were printed upright, so I'm a bit surprised this one broke where it did. But realistically, I probably just tightened it too much, like I do. downside is I need to get this knob back on and I've already tightened that so I need to oh that hurts I need something like a thimble Just something to spread the pain Stop there. Yeah, much better. So I'm going to go set up the printer, print those two parts, and then I'll probably work on cutting the plate since that's not going to be highly entertaining whatsoever. So it'll be mostly off camera because I can't fit. I saw it over here. But what goes on top of it is this assembly. So this bolts to the upper plate. Uh, that other round piece goes in the center and holds some bearings. You know, I can make this as wide as I want. Or it's tall this way. I'm almost wondering, so I got some thicker plate and some thinner plate. I'm wondering if the thicker plate would be a better option. Like that. Have it hang over both ends just a little bit. And then make it just big enough that this sits on there like that. Or I go slightly smaller like so. That might be better. So the reason I'm looking at this overhang uh, is there's a slight assembly issue. So the this this piece bolts down from the top and the bearings go in which holds this piece in place. And then this piece screws up from the bottom. So I need to drill holes to get to these bolts. So if this assembly hangs over the edge a little bit, so I don't have to drill these two holes, that's a bonus. But at the same time, this bottom plate gives this support. So when you're doing your squeegee, you're pushing down on this. So I, th I think I do want it on the plate. So I'm thinking I make it, make the plate exactly that wide about there for this rotational assembly it will bolt on you know split the difference between these two bearings just sort of like that 
I'll drill and tap the back side of the plate to screw these to it. And I'll just transfer those. Um, and then there's a bunch of other pieces that go. Oh, that's that's a concern. Mm. So this is the adjustment for this thing. Well, we should never crank it all the way over here. So this it's not set up for very much adjustment. I don't think. So what's going on in my brain is let's say it's all the way over here. We have this mounted to that and then this knob. Actually it does clear the rail. So my, my concern was this knob would not clear this rail but it does. So if that if that is inboard or outboard of this bearing you know, over here or over here it can slide all the way in. So yeah, I think I'll make that plate just slightly wider than this slip ring. And I'll make it the width of the plate just so I don't have to cut it, which is just slightly wider than this. And that will put me basically up to the height of these rails, I think. This is stuff slightly thinner. Okay, so the slightly thinner stuff puts me exactly at this height. So that stuff will put me slightly higher than you're up that width and another plate. Is this plate? I could use this plate. I'm just trying to optimize my material. Once I chop this plate in half, there's only so much you can do with that little piece. And also there's not a whole lot of meat there for the screws to go in. So these are M3s as well. So it's going to be these guys. Oh, that, that is perfectly flush with the top of this plate. Or slightly under. So... This, this might be the right choice for this layer. Um, but it has to hold up those other bearings. So, where are those bearings? There they are. So, these attached to these. Man, that hole is huge compared to the screw. I wonder if there's a. I wonder if I didn't print a piece. So this is the bearing they call for, and it's almost the size of the head of this. It's supposed to clamp down on this piece, which spaces it up the right height. I'll have to do some checking. Maybe these are flatheads, in which case I have to make sure I have some M3 flatheads. Deep thoughts. Hmm. Oh, I need to adjust that at some point. Probably can do that now. So, this rail is 300 millimeters ish. So, Oh, it's pretty close to center. I'm three two hundred and ninety-nine. So one fifty. Yeah, that looks good. Oh. That's on, these are on. I need to cut this. I need to print those parts. Ah, I need to look up the. Look, do I have that page up? Oh, 
I do. Let's see. I know they had a picture of that assembly. when he last updated this page. Uh, yeah, so it shows cap head screws. I just, I just think they're too small. What do you do? Ow! Or maybe I got the wrong bearings. That'd be a bummer. Mr. Bowing. He is a 605R5. Uh, it just started really sloppy. I'm wondering if these are not the right bearings. So in theory, the way this goes, well, they're definitely not the right length, so i got to get... I got a flat head in there and s use that to center the race, then it might work. But I'll double check that 605s are the, the bearing I'm looking for. Put that back in there. I think I've done all I can do for tonight. I need that assembly before I can move up to the next layer. I'm gonna take some trash out though. Oh, I gotta check on bushings. So, print parts, check on not bushings, bearings. Um, I do have some extras of those somewhere for my printer, so if need be I can steal from there. And then the hope is once I get that plate on here, the diagonals between these box will stiffen this up. Um, what I mean, so it is diagonals, but since it's a sheet good, you get the diagonals plus more. You, know, you can't take a flat sheet of something like this and push on the corners and rack it. If this was an open frame, you probably could rack it pretty easy. You, know, you add two diagonals and it really stiffens up. And then more material you add from there, the stiffer and stiffer it gets. God, that's almost the right size for the bottom. Okay, I gotta go noodle this for a while and figure out what I want to do. If I gotta put the bottom sheet on, I don't know if I have enough thin aluminum to do it. If I don't need the bottom sheet, you know, just these four stiffen this moment up enough, then I then I don't need that sheet down there. Which is also nice because you can flip it over and oil things then without a sheet of stuff in the way. Whoa. That's gonna be so nice. Etch a sketch for solder stencils. Okay. I'm going to call it. Uh, I don't think I have any corrections so far for today. Um, all the parts and screws were about what I thought. So, thanks for watching. If you ever watch, and see you for part three.